guys welcome to knowledge Pond youtube channel in this video i would like to share all dot net commonly used interview questions and answers so let me start with the very first question what is the dot net standard so the dot net standard is a set of specifications that are intended to be available on all dot net implementations the actual motivation behind the dot net standard is establishing a greater uniformity in in the dot net ecosystem the main advantages are it defines the uniformity in all dot net implementation it uses for developers to produce portable libraries that are usable across the dot net implementations it reduces or even eliminates conditional compilation on shared source code and it also solves the code sharing problem for dotnet developers by bringing all the apis that we expect and even love across the environment that we needed to develop for different applications like desktop applications mobile applications web applications or even for cloud ready applications if you see the pictorically what exactly the dotnet standard so the dotnet standard which is common for all three supported frameworks like dotnet framework dotnet core and xamarin if you would like to develop any application and um, you have to choose the right standard version so that and i have to check whether that version is supporting for what supporting for whether it is dotnet framework or dotnet core or xamarin so what is the dotnet core so dotnet core is the lightweight development model that allow us to create applications that support and run on multiple platforms like windows mac os and linux so what is xamarin xamarin is a framework to develop a cross platform mobile applications it is a single language c sharp and runtime that works on three mobile platforms like android ios and windows and and if you develop so we'll get same look and feel as native so what exactly the dotnet framework so the dotnet framework is designed and developed by microsoft corporation it is a software design and development framework and it is used to build the applications for desktop and mobile and even for web application and uh, cloud ready application it consists of for uh, different layers like common language runtime and base class library and it gives different supported application types so what are the main advantages so the memory management it supports for memory management like it responsible for allocating and deallocating the memory and it supports common type system it has a rich extensive base class library it supports different platforms for developing different kind of applications like if you if you're targeting for web application there is asp.net a built-in built-in framework and if you want to use any soa based applications like service warrant application we have wcf and even web api and if you would like to for any desktop application we have wpf uh, either fraud form and another feature like language interoperability and it also support version compatibility it also supports um, side by side execution that means it resolves the version conflicts by allowing multiple versions of common language runtime exist on the same computer so as we discussed about the dotnet standards it is a main advantages in the uh, for uh, creating different class libraries that works on multiple dotnet frameworks so what are the different layers if you see here at the bottom is common language runtime the next is uh, base class library and the remaining is supported applications so what exactly the CLR the dotnet framework provides a runtime environment called a CLR 
which runs the code and provides the services that make us development process very easy. So what are the different services providing by the CLN? It provides code management, memory management, security management, verification of type safety, interoperability, compilation of MSL code into native code, and managing the exceptions and errors. And it also supports for um, uh, features for developers like profiling and debugging as well. So what is a CLR execution process? So if you write any code using any .NET supported languages, we, when we compile, it compiles the MSL code by using the language supported compiler. Then it the code goes to CLR. CLR will compile this MSL code to native code with the help of jitters. So what is a CTS? The common type system is a rich type system that supports the types and operations which are common in most programming languages. The common type systems are class, structure, interface, delegate and enumeration. What is a CLS? The common language specification is a set of rules or specifications which all .NET supported language has to follow to be part of the .NET framework. It is a subset of common type system. What is a BCL? The base class library is set of classes, interfaces and, and value types that provide access to the system functionality. It is a foundation on which .NET framework applications are components and the controls we can develop. What is the MSL? The MSL is a Microsoft Intermediate Language. So when we compile a do any .NET program, the source code first it converts to MSL code by using the language compiler. And it is a CPU independent instruction and which the .NET fra framework programs are compiled. And it contains the instructions for loading, storing, initializing and calling methods on objects. So what is a JIT? Just in time, compilers will compile the MSL code to native executable code, either EXE or DLL for the specific mission and operating system. As JIT are aware of processor and OS exactly at runtime, so it can optimize the code extremely efficiently, resulting in very robust applications. So different types of jitters like uh, we have pre-jit, ECHNOJIT and normal JIT. In pre-jit it compiles the complete source code into native code in a single compilation cycle. So uh, this is done at the time of deployment of the application. In ECHNOJIT it compiles only those functions that are called at runtime. However, these compiled functions are removed when they are not required normal JIT. So it compiles only those functions that are called at runtime and they are stored in the cache. If the same function is called next time, the sailor uses the same copy of compiled code without recompiling. So what is the difference between the managed code and unmanaged code? The managed code is code is executed by CLR instead of operating system and unmanaged code is a code that is executed directly by the operating system outside the CLR environment. So in memory management, if you see, so we have different types of uh, memories in .NET, like we have stack memory and heap memory. What exactly the stack memory? The stack is responsible for keeping traffic keeping track of running memory needed to our applications. And heap memory, heap is used to keep track of all the reference type information. And heap, heap also used for dynamic memory allocation. So what what is the difference between the value type and reference type? Value types are types which stores in the stack memory. And we have different value types like int, float, double, and so on and the reference types are like a pointers which points to the memory location and it stores in the heap memory. 
So reference types like we have strings and objects. So what exactly the boxing and unboxing? The boxing is the process of converting the value type to reference type and in unboxing it is completely reverse process like it converting reference type to value type. So what is the garbage collector? The garbage collection is the process or mechanism that allows the computer to detect when an object is no longer used or no longer accessed. So it then automatically releases the memory to that object. So how many types of generations are there in the garbage collector? So we have three generations like generation 0, generation 1 and generation 2. So we can say generation 0 when the object is initialized and it is to be a generation 0 and when objects that are under garbage collection process then we can say the generation 1 and whenever the new objects are created and when there is no memory in that location then it try to move those objects to generation 1 and from generation 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 so maintaining these generation will enhance the performance of the applications we'll see some questions related to assembly so what is an assembly an assembly is the primary building block of dotnet framework application it is a collection of functionality that is built versioned, and deployed as a single implementation unit and it and assemblies are self-describing by means of their manifest which is an integral part of every assembly so what are the components in assembly assembly is logical unit as we discussed earlier it has uh, manifest metadata msl code and resources so what is the manifest the manifest contains assembly identity version culture and digital signature and this information is used at runtime to resolve the references, enforce the version binding policy, and validate the integrity of loaded assembly. So, what is the metadata? The metadata describes the contents in assembly. It includes the description of an assembly and a module, classes, interfaces, methods, properties, fields, events, global methods, and so on. So what is the ILD ASM, like Intermediate Language Disassembler? This is a tool provided by provided in C-Sharp and it available in the .NET like Visual Studio. It mainly used to view or read the assembly content in a manifest view. So what is the difference between the private assembly and shared assembly? The private assembly is used only by single application and a shared assembly is is like it is used by multiple applications so what is a satellite assembly the satellite assemblies are assemblies that are used to deploy language and culture specific resources for an application in an application a separate product id is assigned to each language and a satellite assembly is installed in a language specific subdirectory so is versioning applicable to the private assembly really we don't need like versioning is not applicable applicable to private assemblies as these assemblies resides in the same project directories so what is the difference between the namespace and assembly the namespace is the logical container which holds all the types so the concept of namespace is not related to that assembly the assembly may may contain the types which are hierarchical names have different namespace routes and the logical namespace route may span multiple assemblies but in dotnet framework a namespace is a logical design time naming convention like convenience the whereas an assembly establishes the name scope for types at runtime what is a global assembly cache GAC <coughs> GAC is used to store the shared assemblies so which are common for several applications on the computer. So assemblies deployed in the GAC must have a strong name. 
So there is a tool gagutility.exe which is used to add the shade assembly to gag folder. <coughs> Sorry. So what is the strong name? A strong name is a .NET assembly name combined with its version number and other information to inequally identifying the assembly. So this allows the multiple versions of the same assembly to peacefully coexist in the global assembly cache where the shared assemblies are typically stored. So it consists of five parts or the simple name, public key, version, culture and processor architecture information. So what are the main steps which we follow to create a strong name and after creating the strong name how can we add uh, this shared assembly into GAC. So there are steps like we need to open the .NET command prompt and we need to type sn-k that is a strong name creation file then we have to provide the like strong name <coughs> file name and then after creating the strong name we need to update in the assembly information assembly info.cs file then we need to build by using the GAC utility tool we can add this, this assembly into GAC folder. So what exactly the app domain? The application domain is a virtual process that serves to isolate an application. So all objects created within the same application are created within the same application domain. Multiple application domains can exist in a single operating system process making them a lightweight means of the application is isolation. What is the difference between the app domain and the OS process? An OS process provides isolation by having the distinct memory address space. While this is ineffective, it is also expensive <coughs> sorry, and does not scale to the numbers required for the large web servers. But in case of uh, app domain, the CLR, on other hand, enforce the application isolation by meaning, like managing the memory use of use of code running within the application domain. This ensures, like, um, it does not access memory outside the boundaries of the domain. So, what is a DLL hell? DLL is the DLL hell is the problem that occurs when installation of newer application might break the the existing applications as newer DLLs are copied into the system and the older application do not, does not support the are not compatibility with them. So to overcome this problem and .NET provides the multiple versions of assembly at any given time. So this is also called like side by side uh, component versioning. And uh, thank you very much for um, listening this video. If you really like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you would get latest updates automatically. Yeah, thank you very much.